So we are talking about our COAT initiative, well, which is community outreach, accountability, and transcendence. Yeah. And transcendence, can, it's the soft one. Yeah. It's the one that we're mysticism. Yeah. And you're right. If, what do you mean by transcend? You think transcendental meditation? Is that what it means? Yeah. That's sort of thing. So, um, Alex, you're the new guy. Let's put you on the spot. When yeah. you you came in, like you interviewed, you had conversations about where we were as a church, coat, and our values came up. Yeah. What did you hear, and what do you what do you think when we talk about transcendence? So, I may have gotten it completely wrong. So, who, well, this is a good. Inter- Notice he looks at the Hope. boss right there, like Ooh, he's, it's hey, a quiz. Hey, hey yeah. uh, maybe he didn't get this right. No, I just think of transcendence. I think of the relationship with Jesus. And I think about going beyond ourselves and looking to God and making him Lord of our lives. And so when I think about transcendence, it's stepping out of our comfort zone Mm. to experience intimacy with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And and that was kind of the idea I got is that we want our church to experience that. We want Allen Creek to experience that, the transcendence, the intimacy, Mm -hmm. the, the moment where you can get really intimate with God. Is yeah. someone calling me? I think so. What is that? That is a weird sound. Is it a ghost? It's an alien invasion. I, I, I'm sorry. I am so ADHD. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's what my thought is, Dan. So, Rick, uh, you talk a little bit about transcendence. When, what, does that, what does that mean? Well, uh, Be a nerd for a minute. Define okay. It. Well, transcendence mm. is, you know... <laughs> that which is coming from above right so so it it is like what alex is talking about it's about developing a a culture that is experiencing the vital presence of god so you know you say well how is that a change from what we're doing before weren't we doing that before right right? we're doing the church so i i I think for us it was uh, it encompassed uh several things that were going to happen in the room and a big piece of that uh, related to, you know, the, how we looked at the worship experience as it relates to that outsider. And so we kind of worked with an axiom in the early, you know, for the first 20 years of the church. And, you know, um, we had we, good reasons for it. We just realized that worship is still the weirdest part of the church experience for an outsider to appreciate. Yeah. And I think that's probably still true. But Again, going back to this idea that what, what, a, if a person is coming into a church service now, having been uh, through a lot of the, the outreach efforts we're talking about, relationship with an AC3 or through some sort of need meeting that's going on, the authenticity of faith has been built. And now, n- only now are they ready now to come into the room. They are likely not going to be uh, completely like gobsmacked by the fact that people sing songs and they might raise a hand or two, or there might be some physical demonstrative things. So that that we're still sensitive to the idea that an outsider that still can can be weird. But we also are realizing that more and more there probably is an opportunity for us to to use the worship experience as a teaching tool uh, for that uh, outsider, and a, a way that they they can look around. And there, there's an interesting Bible verse that kind of gave me a handhold for this, Dan. In 1 Corinthians, Paul talks to that church about outsiders coming to their church. And he specifically says, look, if everyone's speaking in tongues, careful for the outsider because they're going to think you're all nuts. That's <laughs> almost a direct quote. And so so he was basically saying, you need to be sensitive to that outsider who's coming into your environment. And if everything is uh, completely unbelievable, if everything is... Um, uh, oriented to stuff that you can appreciate that is that is edifying to you believer in a very mystical way you have lost sight of the fact that there's someone next to you that you need to care about and and specifically if it's an outsider you need to care about what they're what they need and what they need is in in his language prophecy in other words they need the proclaimed you know truths of the christian faith spoken powerfully so that they could go wow god is here and again, that's pretty close to a direct quote of what Paul, Paul's saying. He wants that for the for the for that environment when Christians gather. So 
We're seeing more and more of that. And, and the biggest practical change for that, Dan, when we implement a transcendent is to move worship from its own sort of segregated part of the weekend experience because we knew it was, you know, a graduated elective for an outsider to, to the main experience and have it become an immersive experience where both the believer and the seeker can pl have the, that moment where God is here. And that's the experience of transcendence. And would you say, too, that I, I, it, it was a bit of a learning for us that we took Paul's words, right? Again, going back to kind of the ethos of Allen Creek and the way we founded the church, that we took Paul's words about, hey, be, be aware of that seeker in the space. We looked around at what churches were doing, uh, you know, elsewhere in the Western world, and we're saying, man, churches weren't very good at that. No. And we said, you know, that's something we're going to correct for. Yep. And that a lot of the changes we talked about last episode or the episode mm -hmm. before about how the world's changing, um, this is one of them. I know uh, uh, a young person uh, who's very dear to me said at one point, yeah, you know, the church has done a really good job of making sure that it's relevant, but I can be relevant anywhere. Mm. I can encounter relevance anywhere. Where do I e experience yeah. the transcendent? Yeah, Coca-Cola is relevant. Right? Yeah. I, I uh, Facebook uh, is relevant, well, but the it's fact not is, transcendent. There's an algorithm out Facebook there. is no longer relevant. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, right. TikTok yeah. is relevant. TikTok is there you relevant. Go. Nailed but, it. But not transcendent. Who's the hip old guy? <laughs> yeah. Right? So, the point is, is that we've got, uh, we've got, um, we've got uh, algorithms now in, um, on, on all these platforms on our phone that are designed to make sure we're as relevant as possible. Yeah. It's going to curate everything for you to make sure that you feel like you belong. Right. Right. I was talking to a friend of mine this morning who's part of a Facebook group that uh, I, their, their thing is far side cartoons. Yeah. So he's, he's with talk about relevant. If you're a far side fan, all you have to deal with are other far side fans, you know, insert any kind of a thing here. But where can somebody go to experience the reality of a transcendent God, a God who is outside of time mm, and space mm, and who good. people, mm -hmm. who, you know, so I, I think it was a big adjustment for us to recognize. Good. We've always known that about God. Yeah. We've yeah. always uh, we've always viewed God through that lens, but we've not always expressed it in a way that everyone could be welcome to engage with us. Right. Right. Transcendence. That's no, that's that's really good. And I think for the millennial generation, Gen Z generation, that's so true. I mean, they can experience relevance at a rave, right? right. Like that where they're doing, you know, drugs and, and yeah. all sorts of things. But to experience the holy transcendence peace, that that peace that you can only get from God. Yeah. What are we selling? <laughs> like that's yeah. that is it, man. Right. We we that's what we want people to experience. There's 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 some. It was a TV show, a movie, or some media. I recall several years ago where a character was saying, "Hey, look, I'm a 29 year old white female living in America. Everything's about me. Mm -hmm. I'm the center demographic. I'm mm -hmm. everything is targeted at me. And so that right, that's the that's what's happening to the to the youngers. So now it's really it's like okay, we, we can't compete with that, and we shouldn't. Mm -hmm. compete with that uh, aside from uh, the fact that we don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot we need uh, to know the times we need to understand what's going on we need to understand the times we need to and we can have relevant teaching right yeah like we can we can make it relevant but there are certain things that never stop being relevant yeah right so irrelevance is not the answer that's not a goal that's not a goal but neither is relevance huffing and puffing goal. to keep up Huffing. Huffing and puffing to keep up with cultures constantly Could, changing. Because you know stuff. what one of the most unattractive things in the world is? Mm -hmm. Is an old person <laughs> trying to look young. <laughs> one minute. Yeah. Hey. Hold on. <clears throat> hey, I'm look. Uh, I slicked my hair back and I got a, you know, you do not want to see me in a tank top and board shorts. Actually, I kind of do. Okay, that's where I, we I might pay money. <laughs> We're done with this. Michael, are we done? Yeah. I'm out. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I think that's so true. I think people just crave authenticity and they just crave that opportunity to when someone comes to church, they are expecting God. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's <laughs> like, I feel like that's 
pretty accurate, yeah. right? Whether you're a seeker, there's a so speaking of that. There's this great guy. Uh, um, he's a ag- self-proclaimed agnostic. Grew up in the church, became an agnostic. Named Ron Hall, and he's a he's a, a, a historian, a really really good one. But he kind of fell away from faith. But you can tell that he's exploring it again because he's realizing that everything he loves about the West, compassion, human rights, and all that kind of stuff, does not come from his his historical. Uh, heroes because mm. he was a big fan of the classical period the Greeks the Romans that was where it was at then he grew up and became a historian and he realized that they were brutal that they experienced a kind of eugenics that would make the Nazis blush uh, and he realized everything he loved came from Christ came from Christianity and so he's now sort of doing interviews with high ranking or high level Christian apologists and others and one of the things he says is I've kind of went to church uh, one time uh, recently. He said they were just talking about banal stuff like, uh, you know, make sure you go here. And it was during the COVID thing. It's like, here's all our little crisis management. He says, tell me about the crazy stuff. <laughs> you know, I want to know the crazy stuff. What do you, what's I want to hear about the party of the Red Sea. And, <laughs> tell and me about the crazy and... stuff that we believe in. And he basically was a cry for transcendence. It was, I, really I that was the that way was I would. super good, man. I just... So, um, so that is not to say, again, the relevance. And so uh, another lo- little thing to throw in here, guys, is that the trick for us is to marry our historic love of the arts and our creative bent because everything about our unique thumbprint we knew and didn't want to change was authenticity, creativity. Yeah. So how can we continue? How can we be a church that um, just tries to create moments of immersive worship that are that where people experience a transcendence of God and and through creative means that we have grown accustomed to do and so that's what we're that's the challenge before us as we look to the future so um just to wrap this up real quickly a couple of things that we we've applied uh real practically out of that is we try to have at least a quarterly if not maybe every two months uh, a prayer and worship night Mm -hmm. where we can kind of take it we don't we don't have to worry about the schedule quite as much mm-hmm. uh, where we can we can move with this, the moving of the spirit. We can really engage in that um, thematically. Usually we have a theme uh, and then also um, Nightlight, which is every Wednesday night at mm-hmm. seven uh, on the Web on Facebook Live. And this is just an opportunity to do a little devotional thought and to pray mm-hmm. and to, as it's said in one of the newest translations I've read, that defines prayer as sending your words to heaven. I love it. Uh, which I love that. So, <laughs> all right. So, so, guys, thank you so much. We yeah, have covered now in a few episodes uh, our entire four-part initiative here at Allen Creek. And we hope that you'll find ways to engage with it. And regardless of who you are or what your role is, you can do so in a couple of big ways. Number one, join an e-group. A lot of these, uh, we, we came up with the e-group plan because we recognized <coughs> that we could touch on all of these, on all four of them, by having these smaller communities. That was a really a way to do that. Communities. Are you being my hype man right now? Yes. Nice. I like it. Community. <laughs> e-group. The e-group. Yeah. So, uh, but then the other thing is make sure that you're engaging in a weekend service. Now, we understand that in this period of time, that's going to mean different things for different people. Some of you, it's just not the time to come back into the building. But make sure you're joining us online with that live stream so you can see church. Drop a comment. It's one of yeah. the most, mm-hmm. it's one of the, the neatest things for everyone else in the church just to see your name there. Yeah. Online. To say, hi, everybody. Hey, AC3. Yeah, yeah, it's really it's great. Like, we want to know you're there. Yeah, that's right. So make sure you can do that. And if you can be in the building, be here on Sundays at 10 a.m. And then you can experience church. And then finally, we love you online, fam. All right. Thanks, guys. That was well done.